we start with your team news ahead of tomorrow's game? Team news from uh, Tuesday night, we lost uh, Perez for a while uh, for ankle uh, injury. Hopefully uh, we'll recover, but I think he will be six to eight weeks out. And uh, of course, as you have seen, uh, we have Giroud back available. Uh, we have uh, Aaron Ramsey will be in the squad tomorrow coming back. So we, have, we are now basically November, we have not played, so it's good to have them back. And uh, we have a few uncertainties about Walcott, uh, Montreal, Cazorla, but uh, we have all tests today. Are Giroud and Ramsey at the stage where they can go straight into the starting 11 or are they more likely to, to be on the bench? <coughs> Look, uh, they are available for selection. Uh, I have to be a bit cautious, uh, especially with Aaron Ramsey. Uh, because he has not played at all yet, and uh, uh, he has only one week uh, with the team, so I will be a bit cautious with him. You haven't lost a, a Premier League away game since February. Um, what is it that makes your team so resilient on the road? Well, the fact <coughs> that we are basically have a good solidarity and that we play away from home with a full desire to win the games. <coughs> As well that you have improved our uh, defensive uh, quality, I believe, that overall. But uh, it's all in question every time, you know, we go tomorrow, we have a tricky game tomorrow, early. And uh, I think uh, overall we have to just to be inspired uh, by what we have realised until <coughs> now and continue to, to improve. And finally for me, it's been quite a tough start <coughs> for the season for Sunderland, but where do you see their main dangers tomorrow? Well, uh, their main danger is Defoe, uh, basically because uh, they are as well on good, good on set pieces with Kazri, they have a strong midfield, they are good on set pieces, they, are, they have uh, Kone, O'Shea, who are dangerous as well on set pieces, you know, so of all, they are a team uh, who is at the moment uh, in a bad position, but uh, it's early in the season and the difference, it's very tight at the top and very tight at the bottom as well, so there's no differences made uh, anywhere. Um, in terms of Perez, is it particularly frustrating for him to pick up this injury now just as he's starting to integrate him in and he's probably learning more about what it takes to be an Arsenal player and getting closer to, to being... Yes, it's very frustrating because uh, he worked very hard to get there and now uh, he's uh, close, you know, uh, he's first, he's of course he's absolutely gutted because uh, it's an injury coming from nowhere and the stupid one because it was a kick, deliberate kick and uh, finally uh, it's a similar tackle to Xhaka uh, but it uh, was no red card but anyway the red card was would not have helped Perez what is the most important is that he's out for six to eight weeks. Seems like that tackle has left a bit of a sour taste in the mouth for you. You don't seem happy with it. With? The, the, the kick that he got. No, because it was not needed, you know. Uh, but I think it was more uh, frustrated reaction from the player. He didn't had no chance to get the ball like that. But you have to deal with that. Sometimes you get away with it. Sometimes you get... Uh, a bad injury, but uh, in this case it's uh, unfortunate. What are you missing when you're missing Santa Cazola? Look, uh, the pass from deep midfield to high midfield basically and the security on the ball, uh, getting out of pressure when we are uh, closed down, you know, it gets you out of tight situations and uh, creates openings for the team and uh, with as well a good uh, understanding between him and Mesut Ozil. Mm. And obviously all of that is fundamental to where you play, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Is <laughs> yes, but uh, you know, uh, uh, for example against Middlesbrough, people say yes, uh, Santi did not play. Yes, of course, but uh, I believe that uh, we had enough domination, enough quality uh, to win the game on the pitch and that's where we have to find a solution even when Santi is not there and that's uh, 
no, uh, even how, uh, no matter how big Santi is, and uh, God knows that I rate him highly. We have as well drawn games with Santi, you know, and lost games with him as well. So we have to find a solution with the players who are on the pitch. Is it worse if he's missing and Shaka is suspended? Because Shaka's got that quality too, hasn't he? Yes, he's as well a good pass of the ball from deep midfield to high midfield. Um, it's been on the agenda a bit this week, what, what's happening at West Ham, and I know it's, mm -hmm. it's a few weeks away that you go there in the start of December. How disappointed were you with the scenes that we saw this week, and how damaging is it for the English game? I'm surprised, uh, even more than uh, disappointed, because uh, uh, West Ham is usually a very strong fan base, uh, very motivated, and uh, as well, we are not used in England to, to face this kind of problems anymore. And uh, personally, I'm in favour of uh, uh, the resurgence of standing opportunities behind the goals, you know, and that is not a very good advert uh, to come back to standing opportunities for, for people in the stand. So, I'm surprised and hope, hopefully uh, West Ham will get rid of the problem very, very quickly. Do you think that sets back then the argument for, for trying seating, uh, standing areas? Yeah, of yeah. course, it's, uh, it's against completely and it gives an argument especially to people who are against it. Yeah. Um, could you see it getting <coughs> to the point where a game is played behind closed doors? Do you think it no. could go that far? That There's nothing that more dull than week. that. I prefer not to play. Uh, and playing games behind closed doors. Um, this summer, the transfer policy saw so you bring in three, three quality players, and in some quarters you get criticised for that. But are you seeing now that the benefits of only having to integrate three into your group? You've got such a consistency. Yes, squad. of course. We have a big squad, you know. We have a big squad, and uh, I believe a, a competitive squad is where the, the competition is fair inside the squad. If you have too many, there's no competition because some players will never play. If not enough, there's not enough competition and uh, so it's uh, detrimental as well. So uh, we have opted for a short number and quality that disrupts less uh, uh, the way we play football and uh, the technical stability. And I wanted to ask you this lastly about Jermaine Defoe, you mentioned him earlier. He went off to MLS and it looked like that could be <coughs> the direction that his career was going. But to mm. come back into the Premier League, keep scoring, keep having an impact at mm. 34, he's kind of defying his, you know, his age and the, the traditional path. Isn't yes, it? you have to, honestly, you have to admire the foe for what he has done because you think when a guy uh, like him at his age moved to United States, that was the end of, for him in the Premier League and he came back uh, had a huge impact and certainly it's down uh, to him that Sunderland stayed in the league last year <coughs> and uh, there must be a big passion behind that. I don't know him well but uh, he is absolutely amazing. Thank you. Can I just check on uh, Theo Walker? Is, it, is he ill at the minute? Is that right? No, he's not ill. He's a slight uh, hamstring alert, a very minor one. He will have a test today. Even if he doesn't play against Sunderland, is it minor enough that it yeah. should be okay next week? Should be okay Tuesday. If it's not uh, tomorrow, it's uh, okay for Tuesday. You've said in the past you're not a fan of the <coughs> Ballon d'Or. Of? The Ballon d'Or. No. Uh, individual prize. But what, what's that has not changed. Yeah, I, I, I didn't think it would have. But what's your reaction to Messer being among the 30 candidates? <coughs> Certainly it's a big satisfaction for him and uh, for us as well. But. Uh, I'm uh, against it because I think uh, many p it gets in the head of players. We have seen many people uh, uh, only thinking about themselves because they are obsessed by Ballon d'Or and not anymore by the team performance. And uh, I believe uh, football is a collective sport and uh, we live already in a world where everything is individualised and uh, we want to respect what football is about is first about the team effort. Do you not even mention it then? Would you not go and say, well done, Massa, because you, you don't... Yeah, of course, I, uh, I, I, I uh, encourage and congratulate the players who do well and uh, I'm happy for that. But when you look at the history, uh, many times uh, you do not always think that uh, it has been the most objective decisions always. And uh, 
I think the players who are the best, uh, we know they're all about them and it's not... Let's take care of those who are not as uh, much in the glory, you know, all the best, we know all about them. FIFA are no longer with, with France football on, on the award for the first mm -hmm. time in, I think, six years. Does that change maybe reduce the importance of the Ballon d'Or prize? I don't know. <laughs> um, and uh, d just one more on Erzo. Is there any is there any update at all on, on a contract, a new contract? Uh, not nothing really uh, concrete enough to talk about it. But it's moving along. <laughs> Sorry, it's moving along. Yeah, yeah, it's moving along. In terms of looking at the the title ambitions this season, Arsen, in terms of your title ambitions, dropping points last weekend, is there an element of feeling a little bit of pressure going into this Sunderland game? Yeah, of course, the pressure is on every week f to, uh, for everybody and uh, as you said, uh, we said it's uh, very tight at the top, you know, two points uh, I think for five teams difference, so every game of course becomes important, but as well on the other hand, uh, you have to not to be fooled by that, you, you win the games when your performance is right, so let's focus on what is important, that means the quality of our performance. Last week we had 75% of the ball and could not score, so we know that uh, we have to use the ball better in a more efficient way. We know that you're in your 20th season, but do you think that you learnt more from the experience last season than, than any other in your career here? I try always to learn, you know, uh, and I think uh, if I have uh, maybe one quality, I try to learn from everything. and. Uh, Every year I learn things, more or less. I think what we learned all f last season is that a team like Leicester can win the championship and lose only three games. Nobody would have predicted that uh, before the start of the season. And uh, that's why uh, I think it will be very tight again this year. Also, you've come up against David Moyes when he was at Everton. Um, mm -hmm. Going up against David Moyes' team, are, are there any any things that you were expecting from him to put out with the Sunderland team when facing Arsenal? Well, David Moyes is an experienced manager who has, uh, I think, uh, 15 <coughs> seasons or of the Premier League. So I, I think uh, he will adapt to the strengths of his team and certainly organise that team that uh, they can uh, defend very well and catch us on uh, moments of uh, break, in the breaks, uh, situations we have or on set pieces. Do you think he's recovered from what happened to him at Man United? I think so. I think uh, once you're out of uh, an experience, you go into the next one and you focus just to give your best for your next club. And I think, uh, why should he not have recovered? Uh, he's not... You dwell on it when you sit at home and you have no job. Once you have a job, you focus on doing the best where you are. Mm. Um, let me just take you back to safe standing. You're talking about being in favour. Mm. Why, why are you so in favour of it? But I feel uh, the closest you are to the position of the player, the more uh, passionate you are about, you know. And as well, because it would allow to uh, have uh, lower prices for because you could uh, get more spectators inside the stadiums and uh, maybe uh, even a more passionate atmosphere inside the, the, the stadiums. For, for the scenes that we saw at West Ham in the week, is there a danger of us getting carried away with it or maybe thinking football's got more of a problem with hooliganism than, than it has? I think uh, basically I don't believe that uh, there is a problem with hooliganism in England because you cannot as well say that uh, one a minor incidents, I have heard that <coughs> about 200 people is a general problem in the country. I mean, the, the next, as Andy said, the next big London derby is against Arsenal at that stage. Mm -hmm. Do you have any concerns about playing there, given what's happening? No, honestly, no. Um, can I just check Nacho Monreal's injury? What's the doubt? It's a little muscle tightness. Mm 